So in this video, we are going to continue talking about the storage blocks and we are going to use the same one model that we started with previously. So as I promised you, I'm going to explain the policies or the methods that uh, we have, the options that we have for storing our items in the storage locations. So the option that we had chosen in the previous uh, video was the random available, which means, as we, has, uh, as we have seen, that the transporters will put the objects just randomly in any empty cell. Now, if we choose the first option, which is according to storage, this means that the policy will be followed, that will be followed, is the one that we have chosen here in the rack file. So let's see what the first policy is, which is the drive-in policy. I'm going to uh, change the number of racks to 1 just to be able to see things more clearly. I will also change the rack depth because now it's too long so I will choose 8 and I will change the number of base to 5 and the number of cells per slot to 3 and uh, I will have 3 shelves so now it's better for us to see everything clearly and I will uh, add the number of forklifts to 10 so that just things happen more quickly and I will run my model so this is our rack system and now we are going to watch how these transporters are, are going to move the boxes in, inside the system or inside the storage area So as you can see, the transporters are going to start with the first bay from the deepest cell and then they will superimpose the uh, boxes over each other. When this cell or these set of cells are filled, they are going to move on to the next cells. When these cells are filled, they will move on to these cells and when the, comp when the bay is complete, they are going to move on to the next bay. Now let's check the second option, which is the selective option. So the first thing we will notice now is that now I have these surfaces, which are the actual shelves. So this means that in this case, uh, our transporters will not be able to get inside the storage area. They will only be able to reach this area and they will put the boxes here on the shelves and the boxes are going to be pushed inside. So let's see what's going to happen now. So as you can see, each slot in the bay is filled up independently. When the slot is finished, the second slot will be filled. And finally, when the, when the bay is completely filled, the transporters will move on to the second bay. As for the third and the final policy, which is the specific slot, this allows you to programmatically specify the exact slot that the, uh, uh, the boxes are going to put in. So, for example, there are certain functions that we can use in order to specify the slot that we need our box to be located in. So, these functions are related to the storage area. So, you should start with storage dot. And that, for example, because we want the slot in this case, we can say get slot. And as you can see, you need here to specify the number of the rack, the number of the bay, and the number of the shelf that you want your box to be located in. So the racks, the bays, and the shelves each have uh, a numbering system. So they are, they are numbered starting from 0 up till their number minus 1. So you can check all about this in the help documentation to know exactly how to uh, specify the location. So now that you know all about the store block, let's uh, use the retrieve block. Okay, so the retrieve block simply removes the object that have been put in the storage area 
and move them to a certain location. So, similar to the store block, we need to specify the uh, agents that, our, that are going to move our objects. So, I'm going to choose the same transporter fleet. And we need to specify the node that uh, these boxes are going to be moved to. So, I'm going to add a new node. Here. And in the retrieve block, I'm going to choose this node to be my final location for the boxes that are going to be transformed from the storage to this node. Now I will do some modifications. I will reduce the delay time to two minutes, for example, just to speed things up. I will change uh, the source to one per minute. And I will uh, change the number of the forklifts to four. And I will run my model to see what will happen. So the transporters will move the boxes to the storage same as they did before. So as you can see, at some point, when the delay time of the first, first box is done and it enters the retrieve block, an error will occur in the model. Now, why is this error happening? This is happening simply because the, the retrieve block needs to move the box out in order to move it to this node. However, because there are still other boxes in store, this, this means that the transporter will not be able to reach the box to retrieve it. So you need to understand that this storage system supports a last in first out flow. So you need to build your logic based on this idea. So the chosen box to be retrieved should always have an empty space beyond it so that the transporters can be able to reach it to retrieve it. So let's modify our model in order to take this into consideration. So I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to call it number. And in the source of the boxes, I will change to cause of inject. And on startup, I'm going to inject a certain number of boxes, which is the number parameter. So this parameter is going to be an integer. So let's say it's uniform discrete. Uh, okay between let's say 10 and 20. So the number of boxes that are going to be created at the beginning of the model is going to be anywhere between 10 and 20 boxes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the delay block and I'm going to replace it with a weight block. So in this case, all the boxes that are being stored in our rack system will stay there until until a certain condition is satisfied and this is actually closer to reality because in reality when we have a certain storage area the items will be stored in the storage area until something like for example uh, uh, an order happens and when this order occurs uh, the transporters or the resources will move these boxes with certain amounts to certain locations for the order to be transported. So the weight is going to have a maximum capacity. So these uh, boxes are going to be stored until the, f the total number has been stored in the storage area. When the full number of boxes has been reached the storage area, we will retrieve them in a certain order such that the last element that has been stored is the first one that will be retrieved. In order to do that, we will go to the weight block. So on enter, so every time an agent enters the weight block, we will check if the total number of uh, uh, boxes have reached the storage area. So if 
storage dot size is equal to number so in this case we will uh, start retrieving the boxes in a reverse order starting with the last one so for i equal to storage dot size as long as i is greater than zero by minus minus so what are we going to do now we are going to free the agents from the weight block so weight dot free now we have to specify the order that we need to uh, uh, to free them in so that's why the first agent that is going to be freed is the last one that entered the story so storage dot get so get agents so this function returns the list of agents in the storage dot get so now we need to specify which agent from the list this agent is going to be i or is going to have the index i minus one why i minus one because if we have uh, 20 uh, agents for example they are going to be numbered from 0 to 90 so the last agent is going to have the number which is total number minus one okay so I have a couple of errors here let's see yes this is missing an R and the other one is missing a semicolon Okay, so let's run again. So now the transporters are going to move all the boxes to the storage area up to the point where all the boxes are inside. So now since all the boxes are in the storage area, they have been freed from the weight block and they entered the retrieve block where the transporters will start retrieving them from the storage area to the final location. The transporters started moving these boxes from the storage to this node and we are error free because now the boxes are being transported in a reverse order and finally the storage system block this block is used when we have uh, several rack systems so this uh, block uh, ch changes them or transforms them into one whole set of systems so what we do is we choose here the several storages that uh, we have and they are transformed into a single system so this block works as a management system for these sets of uh, racks